Well, ladies and gentlemen, what say we wrap up this Fire Emblem Fates marathon? It's been a fun ride, but it had to end eventually. And over the past few months, I've talked about many aspects of Fire Emblem Fates, apart from the game itself, or in this case, games. Originally, I planned to pit these three games against each other, but as time went on, I felt it was rather pointless to do so, since I consider Fates to be one big game, and trying to compare things like characters wouldn't work when you take revelations into consideration, so I felt it was better to pit it against its predecessor, Fire Emblem Awakening, especially since Fates borrowed many features from Awakening for both better and for worse. So with this in mind, I feel that we should see which of these games is the better of the two, and I said we for a reason. Hey there everyone, Heaton Gaming Station here, and I just gotta say that I love Fire Emblem. In fact, Awakening and Fates are probably my favorite RPGs on the 3DS. Actually, no, they're my favorites of all time, and having to pit these two against each other, I just think, hold on, for just a second, something doesn't feel right. Is there a problem? Well, it's just that I agreed to do this collab with a Crash X500 fella, who's this Blazing Knight. <laughs> ah, poor Heeman Gaming Station, doing a collaboration at such a tender young age. Huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? You are my collab partner now. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. No, 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 please. So. As I was saying, both Fire Emblem Awakening and Fates are amazing games. From the characters to the gameplay to the outstanding and just awe-inspiring music, these two games have quickly become some of my most beloved games in recent years, and I just love them both to bits. Undoubtedly, I think both games are fantastic and some of the best RPGs out there, let alone on the 3DS, but at the end of the day, one has to be superior to the other. Which is why we're here today, so prepare yourself and bring your best weapons! and get ready to tip the scales as both Blazing Knight and he Gaming Station pit these two games against each other in order to see which one shall be worthy of the title of Fire Emblem. Now for this episode we're going to be judging the games on 8 different categories. Characters, gameplay and level design, graphics and art styles, music slash soundtracks, boss battles, difficulty, replay value, and finally we're going to do the story last since it's arguably the biggest part of the game. As always, we shall be awarding the winner of each round 2 points, and 2nd place only gets 1 point, and whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Now we have to stress that this is just our opinion, and at the end of the day, these are both great games which you should play if you haven't already. Also, keep in mind, while each of us have a different bias towards each game, we're going to try and compromise when it comes to choosing a winner each round, and we're going to try and look at things more objectively when need be, even if we don't agree with what the other person is saying. Also, you should expect spoilers for both games. And with all that cleared up, let's say we get this show on the road and tackle the two newest entries in the Fire Emblem series. This is going to be a big one, and I'm going to need a support partner to help me through this. You think you're up to this, human old buddy? Oh yes, Blazing Knight, I have your back. Together, nothing can defeat us! Right you are, dude. So without further ado, time, time to, to tip, tip the, the scales! scales. Emblem has always excelled when it comes to characters, and good god did both these games hit the nail on the head in this department. Oh, without a question dude, the characters from Fates and Awakening are filled to the brim with charm and personality, not to mention the casts of both games are hugely varied, ranging from deep and complex, from huggable and lovable, downright hilarious to straight up anime tropes. Not sure if that last statement was a good thing, but yes, characters in both Awakening and Fates are one of the strongest parts of both games, and I absolutely love the cast. In fact, some of them are my favourite Fire Emblem characters of all time, so comparing the two is not going to be easy. With that said, why don't you say your piece, Heeman? Gladly! In terms of size, Awakening had 50 characters and Fates had about 70 or so, so it's difficult to pick and compare them to each other. However, in this case, I think it is quality over quantity. On the one hand! Fates had a few characters whose depth and lore were super deep, and you can really get to know a lot about them, and that's super cool, like Obero, Camilla, Perry, 
But on the other hand, there's a lot of characters that are just cardboard characters and really don't stand out. Several people whose main trait is ninja or ashamed of their past. Like Baruka, Shura, Niles. Actually, come to think of it, I think Niles is a little proud of all of his actions. Or the fact that we have 18 characters whose job is retainer. Granted, some of them are the deepest characters in the game. However, in Awakening, every character is amazing. Henry, Lon Koo, freaking three support conversations say re. In fact, there's only one character that I despise, and the only reason that I despise her is because she has such a defined standout personality of being a total unlikable harpy. I believe the Tom you're looking for is Sundere, and I'm kind of in the same boat as you. While Fates has the bigger cast, and some of the characters I absolutely love, like the Royals, Azora, Kaze, Charlotte, Kagero, Effie, and Aboro, some of the cast were either too over the top for my liking, or just plain dull. Granted, it's a very small amount, but it still dampens the cast as a whole. Whereas with Awakening, I love pretty much the entire cast with the exception of maybe one or two characters, since Awakening's cast was filled with a bunch of colourful characters that were unique and just so memorable. Right. In fact, the Awakening characters are so nice they brought them back twice instead of thinking up new ones! Yeah, that doesn't exactly help Fate's case since while Odin, Selina, and Laszlo were incorporated well, I can't say the same thing for the other three who were made into child units. Oh, you mean the most forced character insertion since my fanfiction Sonic and Chet the Hedgehog saved the world? The very same. That's another thing Awakening has over Fate, the child units. Since not only were they incorporated better into the story, they were just overall stronger characters. And while I like the Fates children, the Awakening children outshine them completely. Oh yes, I can certainly second you on that one. While I don't mind the Fates children, the Awakening ones were so much better in every single way. Having to deal with the loss of their parents, they were more entertaining and just more memorable. And the final nail in the coffin for Fates is the case of... the Avatar. Let's be real here, people. Robin is so much better than Corrin in every single way. He's more interesting of a character, and he has more personality. Whereas Corrin is just as bland as you can get and doesn't change at all throughout all three stories. Ugh, don't remind me. So, uh, Blazing Knight, we're thinking Awakening gets this point, right? Well, see, I'm still kind of iffy on that, since Fate's cast, while having more duds than Awakening, has some really standout and well-written characters. I mean, when you take into consideration characters like Takami and Xander, they are much more complex than pretty much Awakening's entire cast for the most part. That's true, but you said that Awakening has far less duds. Fates may have more characters, but bigger doesn't always mean better. Okay, you know what? I'll concede the victory to Awakening if you can name me one character in Awakening that beats out everyone in Fates. Someone who is better than Xander, better than Azora, better than Takami, better than Kaze, Camilla, Elise, Ryoma. Sumia! Point goes to Awakening. <laughs> Works every time with that guy. In terms of gameplay, both of these games stay true to the traditional Fire Emblem formula, however each game has their own unique mechanics to them to make them stand out. Especially in the case of Awakening, which really did a number on the series with all they introduced, for both better and worse. Fates pretty much continues to use these new additions, though tweaking them slightly, along with many additions of its own. On the gameplay side of things, I do like all the things that Awakening introduced to the series, like pair-up, reclassing, and so on. But I won't deny that Fates really did well with how it ironed out some of Awakening's problems. Since in Awakening, there were several moments where I silently sat there and hoped, Please, please support. Please, either block the attack or get a slash of your own in. So the game became rather block-based most of the time, especially when it came to reclassing units, because the system was downright broken and really affected the game's difficulty. Don't worry, we'll get to that eventually. In Fates, I never needed to worry about any of that. I always knew what my partner was going to do, and reclassing units meant that I couldn't infinitely grind for experience. Now I could know if I am either guaranteed a bonus attack or I can utilize my partners as shield to block a blow from me, even if I didn't really want them to. Why'd you block that? It has zero percent accuracy! Perhaps I didn't want to take any chances? You pretty much said exactly what I was thinking. 
While I did enjoy all the new things Awakening did for the series in terms of gameplay, when you take a step back and look at it more objectively, Awakening didn't really think these additions through well enough and resulted in being one of the most broken Fire Emblem games in the series, even if it was a lot of fun. Fates on the other hand was much more focused and reworked these mechanics to a point in which I feel they should stick with the series from now on. Granted, not everything Fates introduced worked, I'm still not completely on board with Unbreakable Weapons, and the less said about Phoenix mode, the better. Don't worry, we'll get to that eventually. Don't just repeat what I said. Hey dude, you're the one who wrote the script. Don't point the finger at me. Uh, shut up. As for the level design, I can't say too much for Awakening. Usually the levels are straightforward without too much going for them or any major changes happening. They only had defeat the boss or rout the enemy. Sadly, you couldn't be further from the truth. Awakening's level design is overall rather bland since the chapters, while fun, don't really offer too much substance and tend to have the same objective in each map. Granted, there are some good chapters like Chapter 10, Chapter 15, and Chapter 16, but overall, Awakening's level design is rather... meh. Fates, to me, overall was much better when it came to level design. In fact, I was confused in Fates when it said, Escape. Escape? What manner of trickery is this? Or, better yet, don't let Nina escape the manor or else you'll fail the mission. <sighs> This guy needs to play the Telia series if he's this shocked by the concept of an escape mission. Well, excuse me for not being able to find some of the most expensive and hard to find games in the series! Point taken. Please continue. Anyway, like I was saying... The only level that even attempted to shake up the gameplay in Awakening was Sibling Blades, while every other level in Conquest and Revelations had different objectives and kept switching up the gameplay, not to mention all the possibilities introduced with Dragon Veins, though Birthright wasn't exactly stellar when it came to level design. Once again, you couldn't be further from the truth. Birthright was slightly better than Awakening, but not by much since most of the levels were rather boring, however Conquest and Revelations definitely fared better. Conquest did a great job of its level design since the chapters were really well structured and unique, not to mention being challenging, thought provoking and most importantly, fun. Granted not every chapter fared well, but overall Conquest is one of the strongest Fire Emblem games when it comes to level design. And then there's the case of Revelations. Now pretty much the entire Fire Emblem fanbase has made it clear that the level design in Revelations sucks, either being too gimmicky, too slow or just plain bad. I get where people are coming from and I see and understand why they think it's so bad. But with that said, I still love Revelations level design. If you think it sucks, that's fine, I completely get where you're coming from. But I love that Revelations kept introducing new ideas into each chapter and making every level a unique experience. Dude, I do not think you should be praising Revelations! Don't you remember what happened last time? Relax, I've dealt with the worst of it. What's the worst they can- Blazing Knight. That wasn't even the most scathing comment I had prepared for you. Human Gaming, you're my collab partner now. <sighs> well, that's just great. How are we gonna do this collab now? No need to worry, dude. I'm okay. How on earth did you survive that, dude? It's 3DS Fire Emblem, remember? Casual mode is enabled. <laughs> well, thanks goodness for casual mode, am I right? So, point goes fates, right? The point goes to fates. because both the games look great and they're both pushing the 3DS hardware to its highest possibilities. Tell me about it. I don't think Fire Emblem has ever looked this good. I mean, yeah, the GBA spikes looked incredible and so did the Radiant Dawn cutscenes, but the point still stands. These games look amazing and they're some of the best looking games on the 3DS. Everything from the environment, to the character models, to the lighting and particle effects, man, these games are truly a sight to behold. And since all Fire Emblem games from this point on are going to be on more powerful hardware, I think they're going to definitely use this for future reference. I'm 50-50 on the art style, since some of the character designs are great and the characters themselves look much more visually distinct and expressive than before, but at the same time some designs are really over the top and stupid. In terms of which is better though, well, you've got me 
there, since I feel both games are just as good as each other. I mean, Fates does have feet, but are we really going to give a point that is as meaningful as functional gameplay and level mechanics for a limb that could simply be blamed on clipping? If you ask me, both games are equally pretty, and I'd go with a tie. Hmm. Well, in this case, Awakening did do the new art style first, and I feel the environments and character designs are overall better in Awakening. Fate still looks great, but it isn't that much different from Awakening, and the environments to me weren't as stand out, not to mention the character designs weren't as strong, mainly due to the unnecessary amounts of fan service. What do you think, Heeman? Heeman? Oh man, Camille looks even better in 3D. Hey, are you looking at Camilla again? That's entirely possible. Budge over. Mm -hmm. Damn, she really does look better in 3D. Hey, what I tell ya? You know what? I feel the differences are so minor, there really is no point declaring as one being better than the other. So in this case, it's going to be a draw. No contest! This is easily the hardest part of the video when it comes to comparing the two, because the best parts of both of these games is the music. Now Fire Emblem soundtracks have always been stellar, but both Fates and Awakening took it to a whole new level, because the soundtracks in these games are incredible. Holy cow, yes they are! I mean, goodness do I love the soundtracks for both of these games. So much that I use them in my videos a lot of the time, and I just can't get enough of them. When it comes to Awakening, oh man, the music in Awakening, I am in love with it. Aside from the songs being just so memorable and well-constructed, they have so much personality then, especially with song titles like, Ah, long cop in my mouth, blah, patilly. Haha, <laughs> yes, this will take some getting used to. The Vake never forgets. I just don't always remember. You have power, like mine. I mean, each song is a paragraph long and sounded like the subheadings for an autobiography, but the feeling they display when listening to them is usually a feeling of reverence or comedy. Or it could be the songwriters being really lazy that day and making some of the dumbest names for songs I've ever heard. Certainly a possibility, yes, but I'm more in favor of the former. I see. I will say though, I do love Awakening's soundtrack. The songs in this game are amazing, from songs like Conquest, Destiny, Purpose, and Don't Speak Her Name, this soundtrack really is something to behold, or in this case, listen to. But to be honest, I think Bates has the better soundtrack. Oh, come on dude, you can't be serious! Sorry, but that's how I feel. I mean, Fate's soundtrack is filled to the brim with so much variety thanks to the soundtracks being different for each pathway, and using different styles of music and instruments. While Awakening may have some of the more standout tracks, I prefer Fate's more varied soundtrack. It's kind of like how Sonic Adventure 1's soundtrack is better than Adventure 2's. What? I was just saying Adventure 1 has a better soundtrack than Adventure 2. What? Oh boy, I think I just triggered him. You okay there, buddy? You okay there, dude? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so after that brief outburst, what's my take on the Fate soundtrack? While I can't name any of the songs off the top of my head, I will admit that the music in Fates is constantly good. And even though there aren't many super standout tracks, every song always complements the game in every way, with more Asian-inspired musics for Hoshido, and more music inspired by European instruments in Noor, and the unsettling otherworldly arrangements in Vala. So, like you said, the soundtrack is very varied and fits the game much better than Awakening. So, even though I love the Awakening soundtrack, and I do mean love it, I will admit that Fates has the overall better soundtracks. So it seems Fates wins this round. I know this wasn't easy for you to do, but thanks for looking at it from a different perspective. No problem, buddy. Though, I'm still salty about the Sonic situation. When is someone not salty about Sonic? Very true point. So, uh, we're giving the point to Fates then?
Man, this part was difficult to decide a winner for as well. But not because both games excelled in this area, quite the opposite actually, since the boss fights in both Awakening and Fates suck. I mean, boss fights are a big part of Fire Emblem, and each game has some really awesome boss fights. I mean, just look at Binding Blade and Radiant Dawn. The bosses in these games are just bad though, since not only are they piss easy, but most of them are completely forgettable. While I can't vouch for the other games in this series, I do agree that the boss fights were in areas where these games did not do very well in. Out of the two though, I think that Fates is worse overall. I mean, who could ever forget Faceless, or Valite, or my personal favorite, Faceless. In fact, most of the standout boss fights from Fates were your siblings, which I'm tempted not to include because they're also playable characters. But in Awakening, while the boss fights were certainly easy, and the main villains weren't that impressive, the bosses themselves were very memorable. I mean, just look at characters like Victor, Vincent, Ignatius, Exius, Pharos, and most importantly, Cervantes. Just look at his mustache! Are you looking such art? Oh, and I guess Musafa was alright as well. I kind of feel the same way. I mean, in Fates, the only boss that actually made an impact were the siblings, and even then only certain ones, Kotaro and Anankos, but no one else. Whereas in Awakening, though the bosses went down in one hit, at the very least I remember these bosses. They had personality, they had charm, and even some of them like Yenfei and Mustafa had some form of interesting backstory. So I think at this point the decision has been made. Point goes to Awakening! I'm not gonna argue with that. Well, this is going to be interesting. I mean, with four games to compare and both of us having different levels of experience, choosing a winner for the best difficulty might not be as easy as it seems. Well, how exactly do you define difficulty? Since one person could find something hard and the other person could find it easy. In the case of Fates, I pretty much felt like we had three difficulty settings. I felt like Goldilocks. Birthright's too easy. And Conquest is too hard. But Revelations is just right. As for Awakening, it's a bit of a mixed bag. In the beginning, it's got a dang good blend of difficulty, but as you bulk up and get to higher support levels, it gets way too easy when you're guaranteed to block damage and get almost two extra hits in with every attack. That's very true. Awakening has yet to have a defined difficulty setting because of how unbalanced it is. I mean, I've heard lots of people say that Awakening is the easiest game in the series, while others say they can only beat it on casual mode. Neither of these statements are wrong, since if you abuse supports, grinding and reclassing, Awakening bends over backwards for you. Whereas if you don't reclass, don't grind and rarely support units, Awakening is actually one of the tougher Fire Emblem games, and the fact that this game's difficulty can flip-flop so much isn't a good thing. Fate's difficulty was more focused and consistent for each pathway. I will agree that Birthright was way too easy, and Conquest, while certainly hard, wasn't too hard in my opinion, at least not hard enough to warrant a playthrough on Phoenix mode. What is a playthrough on Phoenix Mode ever warranted? I mean, with Phoenix Mode enabled, you may as well turn Fire Emblem into a visual novel. Shh, shut up, dude! With Fire Emblem becoming more anime, that might actually happen. Revelations, I feel, hit a very nice middle ground, since even though you can grind, if you don't, the game is designed so that you can still come out on top if you play very smart and don't be reckless, and if you do grind, the game can still be challenging in many ways. It also helps that you have access to every unit in the game and can spend the time to raise the exact team that you want. That is very true. So I guess the point goes to Fates this time! Being Fire Emblem games, both Awakening and Fates will last you about 20-30 to 30 hours on a single playthrough just beating the game, but there's plenty to do along the way and come back to. Not taking DLC into account, Awakening has you doing various Paralog chapters and recruiting new units, and you can battle enemies on the field map in order to gain experience and experiment with new units. Fate certainly has more to do since the game has three separate pathways to play, and each one has Paralog chapters along with being able to deck out your castle and visit other castles, so you'd think Fate is the obvious winner. Exactly, since bigger does not necessarily mean better. Now, while Fates tried to have more replay value by essentially being three separate games, there is no way I can ever see myself going back to Birthright or Conquest and having the game take away half my characters. 
While on the other hand, I don't care too much for Revelations, probably because I was so burned out after playing the other two games. Now, you compare that to Awakening, where I've spent over 100 hours on just one file perfecting my Awakening team because it was so much more fun and streamlined to do. But with Fate making you waste an additional 12,000 G for every five levels you want to go past 20? I'm a little sour at that. And I really can't see myself playing this game after I get all the support conversations unlocked. I can sort of vouch for you on that. Awakening was a game I played through five times and I never felt exhausted or bored doing so. I had so much fun raising different teams, trying new strategies, beating parallels earlier than usual, and experiencing all the support conversations that kept me coming back to this game. With Fates though, I'll gladly go back and play Conquest and Revelations because I love the level so much. I will admit, not having all the characters in Conquest kind of sucks, and Birthright is just so boring that after the first playthrough, I have no reason to go back to it. Not to mention, because I played through each pathway one after another for the Fates Marathon, I was so burnt out that by the end, I just got sick of Fates, and I had to take a two month long Fire Emblem break before playing another game in the series, it was that tiring. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, what game are you playing right now? Oh, I'm playing this one. <laughs> So the legends are true. But yes, while Fates offered more to do... <sighs> Awakening is a game I didn't want to put down once. I look forward to coming back to it time and time again. So the point for this one goes to Awakening. Do you mind not cutting me off mid-sentence? Hey man, what's done is done. It's not exactly like there's anything you can do about it now. Oh yeah? Hey Fire Emblem fanbase, this guy hasn't played the Tellia series yet. A few moments later... SOMEONE PLEASE HELP ME! Oh, FOR THE LOVE OF GOD, PLEASE HELP ME! And now we come to the biggest and most controversial part of this video, the story. I say most controversial because Fire Emblem has a reputation for telling deep and engaging stories about moral grey and the horrors of war. This is one area both games kind of drop the ball in, since while I don't think either stories are bad overall, they do leave a lot to be desired and don't hold a candle to the other game's stories, so in this case, it's choosing the lesser of two evils. Now with the storyline, it's a bit difficult to judge. Not like with the music and the graphics where they're just both so similar, how do you pick a clear winner? It's because I do not know what Fates' story is. It's got three stories, some stronger than others. I mean, let's talk about Awakening first. I really like the story. I love the time traveling mechanic and how it really helped to work the kids in naturally and organically. Of course, they did have three story arcs, but which I did like, even if they did speed through them a little bit more quickly than I would have liked. I do like Awakening's story overall, since it's a fun ride from beginning to end and it does manage to capture that classic Fire Emblem feel in some areas, but I feel each arc was horribly condensed and thus, they lacked any real impact aside from a few key moments. To me though, the third arc was just plain bullshit and the twist with Robin was utterly fucking stupid. Birthright was the most straightforward and basic by the number story I've ever seen. Nothing that we haven't ever seen in a typical good versus evil battle, which isn't necessarily bad. And Revelations. It started out strong. They could have really gone somewhere with it. But once you land in Vala, they didn't expand on the world at all. And honestly, there are more holes in that story than Sumeragi after the Garon attack. And that's a lot of holes. My thoughts exactly, dude. Birthright was so by the book and basic, I could predict everything that was going to happen and the story just didn't interest me at all, and I wasn't the least bit invested in it. With Revelations, while I had a lot of nice ideas, and I actually liked the first half of Corrin recruiting everyone and joining the nations together, once they got to Valor, everything fell apart since there's no world building or backstory on this place, as well as Corrin having some of his dumbest moments in the game, so Revelations was a missed opportunity if anything else. And then there's Conquest. Alright, now this part is going to piss off pretty much everyone watching this video. For this next part, I'm going to ask everybody to remain calm and not get too angry or go overboard. But in my opinion, I honestly think that Conquest has the best story. Yeah, me too. A few moments later. 
Holy crap, it's a war zone in there! <sighs> Tell me about it! I guess we underestimated how salty some people can get. Man, what did you do to get the viewers so angry? We said Congress had the best story in face. You idiots, you knew this was gonna happen! We asked them to remain calm and listen to reason. Ugh, this is the internet, you guys. There's no room for reason or compromise here. Yeah, we found that out the hard way. Now we gotta find a way out of this mess. What did you guys do? Relax, I've got this under control. <laughs> Thank goodness for casual mode! <laughs> Damn right. Look, don't get us wrong, Conquest story is not perfect by any means. I mean, the writing is very flawed, there are some major plot holes, and there was so much more that could have been done with this story, so we understand why people think Conquest has the worst story. Very true, but even though it may not be the popular opinion, this was one of my favorite stories told in the game. You chose the path that makes everyone morally great. Well, mostly everyone. You are forced to sit by and commit more atrocities in the hopes that someday you can bring balance to everything that's happened. Again, it's not perfect, but I enjoyed Conquest Story the most because it was something new to Fire Emblem. But once we got to play as the quote unquote, bad guys, and experience the story from a much darker perspective, Throughout the story, I was really interested to see how things would turn out, something I can't say for both Buff, White and Revelations, not to mention Conquest presented a lot of themes and ideas that I thought were very strong, and though people feel Corrin is at his worst in this arc, I felt here Corrin had the most semblance of character, especially during the moments where his sense of morals can't save the day and he has to turn a blind eye to the situation at hand. Exactly. Korn actually felt like a character in this, not to mention each of the royals had their moment in the spotlight and an impact on the story. In Birthright, only Takumi and Ryoma had any sort of impact, since, let's be honest here, Hinoka and Sakurai did next to nothing in Revelations. It was just a massive cluster of nonsense. Conquest story was just so interesting from start to finish, even though flawed. I was just so captivated by everything taking place. While Birthright and Revelations are weaker than Awakening story, I feel that Conquest comes on top overall. So even though this really isn't going to sit with people, the winner of the final round is Fire Emblem Fates. In the end, both of these games are some of the biggest and best games on the 3DS, as well as being some of the most important entries in the Fire Emblem series. Both games have their ups and downs, but each of them are still fantastic games which we recommend you pick up even if you're slightly interested in them. But when it comes to choosing a winner, Fire Emblem Fates comes out on top in the end, and this is because... Aw man... What's the matter, dude? Well, here's the thing, Blazing Knight. I can understand that from a technical point, Fates is a better game, but there's just something so magical that I love about Awakening. I mean, it's the game that introduced me to this amazing series, and there's just something I love so much about it. I mean, I do get that Fates is a better game, but I think that Awakening is superior. I think I know what that is. You do? I do. And the reason for this is that Awakening has a charm to it that no other Fire Emblem game has. How exactly? Every Fire Emblem game has its own distinct personality to it, otherwise the series wouldn't be as loved as it is today. Awakening though seems to have the most amount of charm to it that no other game has been able to achieve, from the characters, to the story, to the music, and even some of the lesser points like how broken the game can be, and some of the mechanics that weren't properly implemented. Somehow, all of these elements come together in order to create a game that has such a personality and charm to it that it's this game that got most people into Fire Emblem and many hold it as their favourite. Hell, before Fates came out, Awakening was my favourite Fire Emblem game even though I stated both Blazing Sword and Path of Radiance were technically better. It wasn't until Fates that I took a step back and realised that Awakening wasn't as great as I remember it, but I still love the game just as much. That's probably the reason I love Awakening so much. It has so much character to it, and it's so much fun to play. It made me aware of and fall in love with the series, and it's actually the reason I started my YouTube channel in the first place. So there's definitely a lot of nostalgic and sentimental value to it. But I do have to admit that when you look at the game more objectively, it is rather flawed, and most of those flaws were fixed in Fates. Not to mention that Fates is an overall more focused and polished game. So even though Awakening is my favorite game of all time, I will admit that Fates is the overall better game. 
Very true. I still love Awakening, and I will love it to the day I die, but Fate really is the better game. And while Awakening does some things better than Fate, it's clear that at this point, Fate is the stronger game. So the winner of this episode of Free Thrall, and the overall better game of the two, is Fire Emblem Fates. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us on this episode of Free For All. I have been Blazing Knight, and I just want to say such a big thank you to Heeman Gaming Station for joining me in this video. You were great to work with, buddy. Hey, not a problem, dude. It was an absolute blast being able to work on this video with you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of it. I think it's a wonderful way to cap off your Fire Emblem Fates Marathon. It certainly was, and thank you all for sticking through this Fire Emblem Fates Marathon with me. It's been a fun ride and I've achieved so much thanks to it and all of your support. But now it's time to give Fire Emblem a rest. No, don't worry, I will still be making Fire Emblem videos and Fire Emblem Fates videos in the future. But right now, I need to focus my attention on other videos that have been long overdue. Interesting. As for me, I've got plans for the future as well. Top 10 lists, Fire Emblem videos, and tons of reviews. Everything from NES games to PS4 games that I definitely plan on looking forward to. What about you, Blazing Knight? What do you have planned for the future? Well, what's the other video game series that gets just as many views as Fire Emblem on my channel? Hold on a second. Let me see if I can guess what this is. Oh! You don't mean... Oh, yes. It's back to Monster Hunter! Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to my channel and Heeman Gaming Station's channel in order to keep up to date with when our new videos are coming out. For alternate video recommendations, I first point you to my last video, Top 10 Fire Emblem Fates Classes, where I look at my 10 favorite new classes from Fire Emblem Fates. Next up, I point you to Free For All Episode 3, where I pit the GBA Fire Emblem games against each other, and for something completely different, why not check out Human Gaming Station's Fire Emblem Fates video where he looks at the first six chapters of Fire Emblem Fates and from there he branches off into three separate videos looking at each of the pathways. Hopefully one of those videos will be to your liking. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Blazing Light and follow Human Gaming Station on Twitter at Human Gaming. Once again I thank you all for watching and a huge thank you to Human Gaming Station for joining me in this video. I'll see you all next time.